Uh, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Vlad. I uh, lead internal observability team uh, here at ClickHouse. So I want to talk a little bit about our internal observability platform that we built for logging and for monitoring the ClickHouse cloud. We call it LogHouse. So here's what we'll cover. Uh, why we decided to build it versus uh, using some third-party service. Uh, just do like a quick overview of architecture, and I want to be, I wanted to do some live demos, but unfortunately, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but uh, we have a booth uh, up there, the observability one. So if you're interested, I will be happy to tell you more and show you, uh, show it to you there. So uh, when we started the company, we had to kick uh, start the observability story, and uh, as many companies do, we chose Datadog to start with. Uh, it was very easy to get it running. Uh, we could focus on some other things uh, while you know just enjoying having uh, the SaaS there. However, uh, pretty soon we realized that uh, it just doesn't meet our requirements. The monthly bill was growing uncontrollably, and we were not getting what we wanted out of this solution. So after some time trying to find a balance between the cost and functionality, uh, this is what we ended up with. So we had a seven days of log retention. We were sampling the logs very heavily for everything that is not like fatal errors. Uh, we were sampling traces, and we were uh, imposing very serious limits on the number of the custom metrics that we were emitting from uh, to, to Datadog. And all that was just very, very expensive. So after running the numbers on, on the cost and collecting some requirements from uh, the engineering teams, it was uh, clear that the way for us to go would be to build our own system. And here's what we wanted out of it. First uh, and foremost, we wanted to dock food the ClickHouse cloud and use all the same integrations that we provide for our customers. Uh, it was all very important for us to support the open standards, so we chose open telemetry based data collection for, uh, for the ingestion pipeline. Uh, we also needed a strong support for high cardinality data, which ClickHouse doesn't have any problems with, but I'll get to back to it a little bit later. Uh, and uh, we wanted the extended uh, telemetry retention. We wanted at least six months. It was critical f uh, for uh, incident analysis and retrospective uh, to have such a long retention. We also didn't want any sampling. Like we want everything. We don't want just a slice of telemetry. We were sampling very heavily with Datadog and just didn't want to go there. And uh, ghost efficiency was a big part of it. Uh, so quite a set of requirements. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, high cardinality and where it comes from. So for instance, like our business is ClickHouse Cloud is to run hundreds and thousands of ClickHouse instances, and uh, each one of them generates lots and lots of telemetry. So let's take a look, for instance, at the query metric log system table. It keeps a history of uh, different measurements, uh, different metrics on a per query basis. Each query is unique. We're tracking detailed metrics for every single one. Uh, in that case, the, the amount of distinct data points grows really fast, and uh, we end up with just uh, trillions of uh, events. So to give you the sense of scale for each query, if we look at the number of columns in this table, uh, we collect about like 800 for every single query. Uh, it covers like, memory locations, like different profiling stats for, for the query, like what aggregations were used, and all like that. Uh, it's important to note that we're talking about the query logs, and it's uh, important to mention how we handle privacy. Uh, in the vast majority of cases, we collect just redacted versions of queries. We usually don't need the full query text uh, for our investigations and uh, access to the unredacted data is uh, controlled heavily. So. so why do we need this? Well, we're a database company. Reliability is a paramount, means a lot. No one would be happy to use the database that is not 
reliable, right? So this telemetry is essential for debugging uh, incidents in the retrospective, making the experience better for our customers. Uh, and we need to have a history because uh, ClickHouse Cloud is a dynamic environment. Uh, instances are, in a sense, ephemeral. They're detached from the, the, the compute layer is detached from the storage. So instance can go idle, they can stop, they can be running, they can scale in, they can scale out, and we need this historical data. We, we cannot just like, connect to the instance itself and get the data from it. So uh, what about the scale of the loghouse? Uh, we right now ingest about like, 560 terabytes of raw telemetry data every, every day. Uh, thanks to the ClickHouse's compression, uh, we shrink it down uh, to around 32 terabytes of data per day in the storage. That's roughly 18 times compression. And uh, the number of events is crazy. We do like two and a half trillion events per day. Uh, so for the full retention period, it's, which is 180 days or six months, uh, total we have about 100 petabytes of raw data, which is compressed down to roughly like five and a half petabytes in the object store. Uh, and uh, we have like, uh, like over 400 trillion events in the uh, in the log house at the moment. Uh, so how much would it cost with Datadog? Uh, Datadog pricing model is uh, complicated, but like, uh, let's try to evaluate that. Uh, let's say we're doing 560 terabytes per day. We're doing two and a half trillion events per day. That adds up, adds up roughly to like 17 petabytes per month and about 75 trillion stored events per month. So in Datadog's case, Datadog charges separately for the ingestion and for indexing. And even with, if we look at just the ingestion, like ingesting like 16 petabytes of raw data with Datadog for like 10 cents per gigabyte ingested, that's gonna be a lot of money. And we don't, don't, don't even start it, we haven't even started with indexing. So it's a ridiculous amount of money, and it was pretty obvious for us that we, we, we should not go this path, and uh, that's why we built it. Like Loghouse ultimately cost us just a fraction of this cost. So uh, how, we, how do we do that? Uh, there's like four main key components in the Loghouse system. Uh, for telemetry ingestion, we rely on the open telemetry, as I mentioned. We also had to like build some of the ClickHouse Cloud specific components to scrape the high uh, cardinality data. We call it SysX. I'm going to talk a little, bit, uh, a little bit later about that. Uh, for storage and processing, the choice was pretty obvious. We just use ClickHouse. Like we use the same ClickHouse Cloud instances that we provide to our customers. Uh, there's like no uh, special treatment really uh, for us. And uh, on the visualization and the user experience side, we rely on our Grafana integration for dashboarding and uh, on HyperDX for live uh, lock exploration. We also built a uh, Grafana scenes uh, plugin that helps us like, navigate better and close some gaps that uh, Grafana like, UI has. Uh, so yeah. On the ingestion side, we actually have two separate pipelines. So the first one is the open telemetry. It captures telemetry from uh, all of our infrastructure microservices, like logs, traces, basically everything that that, that the application can generate right to console or that like send an open telemetry format. Uh, the second one is a high cardinality events pipeline called SysX. It's short for System Tables Exporter. Uh, it's responsible for collecting this uh, detailed high cardinality telemetry. Uh, from the ClickHouse instances themselves. Uh, like, for instance, like the query metrics, the, like the, the, the metrics are they're related to like, internal ClickHouse uh, uh, telemetry. So what the open telemetry pipeline looks like. It's pretty classic. So we have Kubernetes applications running on the, on the nodes. Each node is running open telemetry collector agent. Uh, it tails the console logs of uh, applications that are running on this node. Then they're sent to the centralized region-wide open telemetry collector gateway. 
Uh, it handles all the telemetry enrichment, post-processing, finally it like, batches the data and inserts it directly into the regional, uh, regional loghouse server. Uh, and then once it is in ClickHouse, like, we use tools like Grafana, or HyperDX, or even like, direct access to the ClickHouse instance uh, to, to get access to this data. But we run it in multiple regions, so it's a little bit more complicated than that. Like each region, uh, one of the decisions that we had to make is that, that we collect the telemetry for each region separately. It never leaves the, uh, uh, the region. Uh, it's done for like, both performance and the cost efficiency uh, purposes. Uh, and when we need to query across the regions, we just rely on ClickHouse to uh, execute a distributed queries uh, across the regions. Uh, so what about CSX? What is, what is it and why we uh, had to, to implement that? Uh, to save the compute and uh, avoid some overhead of the extra serialization and deserialization, like uh, this pretty much, pretty much what's happening with open telemetry all the time, uh, we just replaced the uh, open telemetry part with uh, like a small tool uh, that connects to uh, ClickHouse instances directly, gets this high cardinality telemetry, and uh, inserts it into the regional loghouse servers in an AD format, avoiding this extra marshaling and marshaling part. Uh, we also switched from a push model here to a pull model where uh, the scraper, it tracks the last scrape point in time to make sure that no telemetry is missed. And uh, it also has a lot of uh, fail safes. Because we're connecting to the customer instances, we need to be very mindful about consuming the customer resources uh, on the instance. We don't want to interfere with you know, the usual workload. So it has lots of fail safes uh, around that. Like we monitor uh, instances for errors, for CPU usage, and we back off automatically when we see that the instance is overloaded or generating errors. And on the visualization side, we are uh, dogfooding the, the ClickHouse ecosystem. Uh, we, for dashboarding data exploration, we leverage the existing Grafana integration. Uh, it's great, uh, covers most of the basis for us. Uh, we also like, built a custom Grafana scenes app. We're looking to open source it later in the year. Uh, but if you want to take a look at it, I will be happy to show you. Come by the, uh, the observability booth over there. And uh, on top of that, we use HyperDX. Uh, we use it for logs and traces exploration for, uh, uh, for, 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 for plenty of our services. Uh, oops. So yeah, that's where we were. Uh, we had a seven-day log retention, heavy sampling, limited number of metrics, and we were paying lots of money, lots and lots of money for that. And uh, here's where we're at. We have six months of data retention. We don't sample logs, traces, and uh, it's built on ClickHouse. <laughs> it's much, much more cost efficient, cost effective. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you're interested in more details or uh, if you want to take a look at the demo, please swing by the observability booth. I'll be happy to show you around. Thank you.